photography is a wonderful way to teach yourself how to take good photos. Flower photography can give us hours of wonderful enjoyment. Flowers are a fantastic subject, not because of how beautiful they are, but because they are everywhere and they're so easy to shoot. You don't have to go very far to find a beautiful flower. If you don't have any in your garden, then you may want to head to a park or perhaps a public parkland. There are many ways to photograph flowers and I'll be showing you how to do that now. The first thing you need to do is choose your lighting very carefully. Flowers are best photographed under soft filtered lighting conditions so that you don't get any strong contrast of light ruining your image. Soft lighting can be found in the form of an overcast day. These overcast conditions are ideal for shooting flowers because they reduce the harsh shadows and increase the detail and beauty of the flower. Having well balanced and even light is the first step to taking beautiful photos. There are lots of handy ways to learn how to photograph flowers. One of these ways is using a filter. If you find that you're losing some of the detail in your beautiful flower because of the bright light, then you may want to use a polarizing filter. A polarizing filter is a filter that acts like a pair of sunglasses for your camera. It darkens everything and reduces glare in your image. This is ideal if you are unable to shoot your flower in overcast and filtered lighting conditions. So what about when flowers move in the breeze? This can be a common problem if you are using the automatic setting in overcast conditions. The reason is that when you have low light, your shutter speed will want to slow down. Unless you want blurry images, this isn't going to work very well at all to produce sharp flower photos. One of the best ways to get sharp and clear photographs of flowers is to use a fast shutter speed or keep the camera still as much as you possibly can. If you are unfamiliar with shutter speed and how it works in your flower photography, then I suggest the best way to overcome this is by using a tripod. When you use a tripod for your flower photography, it gives you a better opportunity to create sharper images because you are keeping your camera still and photographing your flowers when you get as much stillness as possible. Simply wait until your flower stops moving in the breeze. Simply move your tripod close to your flower and you'll notice that you get a better image. Your depth of field is a very important aspect of flower photography too. If you are unfamiliar with the term depth of field, it just means what's in focus. A short depth of field means only a small portion of the photograph is in focus. This works very well for flower photography because basically you'll be blurring the background. You'll be keeping your flower in focus and the leaves and everything else will not be in focus and that's a really nice effect with flower photography. When you have the centre of the flower in focus and the leaves around the flower not in focus, you can create this beautiful effect. Another way to control your depth of field is through your aperture or what we call f-stop. I recommend using a high f-stop number such as f16. But this is a tutorial for another time, I certainly don't want to confuse you. You may have heard of the term composition. Composition is where you place your important subjects in the photograph. A subject is simply the thing that you're photographing. Your flower becomes your main subject when you compose it correctly. This means you're improving your photographic composition. As far as flower photography goes, your composition is best kept simple. This means don't have too many distracting subjects in the background at all. It's best to keep your flower photograph tightly cropped. What this means is there's nothing on the outer edges of the photograph, you just see the flower only. This means zooming in as much as you can. Keep in mind that the more you zoom in, the less light you have to work with. So this really is a balance of getting the right light and creating good composition as well. If you're unable to shoot your flowers on a cloudy or overcast day, then I recommend using the bright light to your advantage. The trick here is not to eliminate bright light completely and only shoot in filtered light. The trick is to shoot in well balanced, even light, a light that is evenly dispersed across your photograph. 
If you can turn your flower directly towards the sun so that there are no shadows to ruin your photograph, this will work very well if you can't shoot in low light conditions. Flower photography is one of the most beautiful aspects of photography that you can do. Once you start to master the basics of flower photography, like the tips I've shown you here, you'll discover that taking photos of flowers starts to become automatic. Just remember your lighting, your clear focus and your composition are the most important things to flower photography. Once you master these things, you'll be taking gorgeous photographs of flowers in no time. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to your company next time. Bye for now.